I've got another short video I've created to talk about how a polarimeter works and how those filters work for distinguishing chiral compounds. But this slide also uh, summarizes the essential features and introduces a new term, racemic mixture. If you have two enantiomers present to the exact same extent, the rotation of one cancels the rotation of the other. Uh, you also get no rotation if the molecule is not chiral in the first place. But if you know you have chiral substances, then you can detect their equal presence um, by noticing that they don't rotate light at all. Uh, this term racemic mixture comes from a compound known as racemic acid. It's a non-systematic name for a compound that is chiral, and it was the first substance to be analyzed in a way that allowed one to tell the difference between enantiomers, the fact that they give opposite rotations unless they're in a 50-50 mixture. In fact, Louis Pasteur was the person who came up with that. He's famous for the pasteurization of milk. He also did some work in polarimetry and was a pioneer in the history of studying chiral substances. So just as we might use melting point to distinguish constitutional isomers from each other, because they would be different in that regard, we have to use something like polarimetry if we're going to distinguish enantiomers. And so the alpha on the right-hand side of this equation would be the number of degrees clockwise or counterclockwise that under a given set of circumstances, one particular enantiomer affects that light. And as it says here, if it's a counterclockwise rotation, we use a negative number. And so under the same concentration, length of two, same type of light, uh, enantiomers give just exactly opposite results. And this yellow light it mentions at the bottom from a sodium vapor lamp, that's traditionally the wavelength uh, of light that is used to compare enantiomers. Uh, different colors of light will rotate to different degrees, even for the same compound. So a lot of this stuff has to be specified if we're going to compare one sample to another. But you see that number quoted a lot in conjunction with chiral molecules. Here are two molecules. They're both 2-butanol, drawn in a way to highlight their chiral carbons, or their chiral centers, as it's sometimes called. And they are also labeled according to the fact that one of them rotates light 13 and a half degrees clockwise, the one on the left, and the other rotates light exactly opposite, 13 and a half degrees, but counterclockwise. And we can stick that in their names, uh, plus 2-butanol, minus 2-butanol. That's one way to distinguish them from each other. But the plus and minus, as it says there, it doesn't give you information about which structure goes with which rotation. Uh, we have to know a little bit more to know that this enantiomer on the left is specifically the one that has the clockwise rotation and that the other is the one that's negative. When we talk about absolute configurations, we mean we want to know uh, specifically which enantiomer is which, which one has the positive rotation of light, which one is negative. We want to have a naming system that allows us just as we've always been doing, to look at the words to describe a molecule by its name and be able to draw it. Not only all the atoms, but in the case of chiral compounds, to be able to draw them with the right configuration, the right orientation, so that we can zero in on one particular enantiomer if we choose to do so.